Hello, it's me Hana. I wrote the Adult Bible Study Guide of the 2023. This is the first quarterly booklet uh, of January, February, March. But this, uh, this quarter has usually it has 13 lessons, but this time only 12 lessons because of the year, you know. Uh, different so that's why the uh, title is the managing for the master until he comes uh, the let's go to that lesson one part of God's family uh, first lesson read for this week's study Galatians 3 26 29 actually I lost my glasses but this one is almost yeah, 15 years old one. It, it's really good. If I read the, on a, outside without glasses, but uh, outside is still cold and windy. The Galatians 3, 26, 29, Psalm 50, 10 through 12, First Chronicles 23, 13, 14, Philippians 4, 19, First John 5, 3, Matthew 6, 19-21 uh, As Christians, an amazing feature about our relationship with God is that He trusts us to manage His affairs on the earth at the very outset of human history. God explicitly delegated um, to Adam and Eve the personal care of uh, flawless creation. See Genesis 2, 7 through 9, 15. From the naming of the animals to keeping the garden and to filling the, the earth with children, God let it be known that we are to work on his behalf here. He also blesses us with resources, but we are the ones who whom he has entrusted to manage them, such as to collect money, to write the checks, to do the, the electronic transfers, to make the budgets, or to bring our tithes and uh, offerings to the church on Sabbath mornings. God encourages us to spend the resources that he has given to us for our own needs for the needs needs of others and for the ad advancement of his work incredible his children building his buildings and uh, educating the succeeding generations in this week's study we will explore the privileges and the responsibilities of being a part of the family of god <coughs> Actually, if we let, if we know the contents, lesson one, part of God's family to God's uh, covenants with us through the tithing contract for offerings for Jesus by dealing with that, six, laying up treasure in heaven, seven, unto the least of these, eight, planning for success, nine, beware of Beware of covetousness, 10. Giving back, 11. Managing in top times, 12. Rewards of faithfulness. Actually, we expect the kind of rewards of faithfulness. And so let's go Sunday. We are part of God's family. For this reason, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named Ephesians 3, 14 and 15. What imagery is evoked in this verse and what, what hope is found there? Early in Jesus' ministry, he states, In this manner, therefore, pray, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy na your name. Matthew 6 9. Later, he re 
repeats the same prayer privately with his disciples. Luke 11, 2. Jesus told us to call his Father, our Father in heaven, when Jesus encountered Mary after his resurrection, she wanted to embrace him. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father. But go to my brethren and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father and to my God and your God. John twenty seventeen. Because we have the same father as Jesus, he is our, our brother, and we are all brothers and sisters in the Lord. Jesus became a member of the earthly family so that we could become members of the heavenly family. The family of heaven and the family of earth are one. Ellen White, The Desire of Ages, page 832. Uh, read uh, Exodus 3.10, Exodus 5.1, and uh, Galatians 3.26-29. What do these verses say about how God relates to us? Why should this be so enc encouraging? In contrast to a view of cre creation in which we are deemed the mere products of cold, uncaring natural laws. Scripture teaches not only that God exists, but also that He loves to us, He loves us and uh, relates to us in such a loving manner that the uh, Im imagery of family is often used in Scripture to depict that relationship. Whether Jesus calls Israel my people or us sons of God or refers to God as our Father, the point is still the same. God loves us the way family members are supposed to love each other. What good news amid the world that in, in and of itself can be very hostile. Imagine a world in which we treated everyone as family how can we learn to relate better to all human beings as our brothers and sisters? Yeah, the Monday, God is the owner of everything. Read Psalm 50, 20, 10 through 12, Psalm 21, 24, 1. First Chronicles 29, 13, 14, and uh, Haggai 2, 8 was the message here. And what should we, this truth mean to us and how we relate to whatever we possess? The book of First Chronicles, starting with uh, chapter 17, records uh, King David's uh, this desire to build a house for God. He shared this desire with the prophet Nathan, who responded, Do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. First Chronicles 17.2 But that night the word of God came to Nathan, Nathan and instructed him to tell the king that because he was a man of war, he couldn't build God's house. His son would do the work instead. David asked if he could at least draw the plans and prepare the building materials. When David was granted this request, he spent the rest of his life amassing a tremendous amount of hewn, hewn stone. Cedar materials had been prepared and assembled at the building site. They called all the leaders of Israel together for ceremony of praise and thanksgiving. In First Chronicles 29, 13, 14, in King David's public prayer, who did he say, 
was the real source of war or the building materials that he and the people had spent time and money preparing. Of course, in a sense, he said, we really can't take any credit for all these special materials because we are just giving you back your own stuff. The point is important for all of us, whether rich or poor, but especially the rich, because God made everything in the beginning. See Genesis 1.1, 1, 1, John 1.3, 1, Psalm 33.6.9. He is truly the rightful owner of all, owner of all that exists, including whatever we possess, no matter how hard and diligent and honestly we have worked for it. If not for God and His grace, we would have nothing. We would be nothing. In fact, we wouldn't even exist. Thus, we must always live with the really realization that ultimately God owns all that is and by praising and thanking Him for his goodness to us. We can keep this important truth before us. But who am I and who are my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? First Chronicles 29, 14. What beautiful principles are expressed in these words? And how do they reflect what our attitude toward God should be and our attitude toward what we possess? What, what, what we possess? Tuesday, re resources available for God's family. God's greatest gift to His children is Jesus Christ. Yeah, who brings us the peace of forgiveness grace for daily living and spiritual growth and hope of eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. John 3.16 But as many as received him to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. John 1, 12. Salvation then is the foundational gift because without this gift, what else could we get from God that in the, in the long run would really matter? Whatever we might have here, one day we will be dead and gone, and so we, everyone, whoever remembered us, and whatever good we did will be for, forgotten as well, forgotten as well. First and foremost, then we must always keep the gift of, of the gospel, that is Christ and Him crucified. First Corinthians 2.2, 2, at the center of all our thoughts, and yet, along with uh, salvation, God gives us so much more to those who were concerned about their food and uh, clothing. Jesus offered the comfort by saying, Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Matthew 6, 33. Read Psalm 20. 3, 1, Psalm 37, 25, and Philippians 4, 19. What do these verses say about God's provision for our daily needs? Also, when Jesus talked to his disciples about going away, he promised the gift of the Holy Spirit to comfort them. If ye love me, keep my commandment, commandments, and I, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter, and that he may abide with you forever, even the Spirit of Truth, 
whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth us, knoweth that. Knoweth, knoweth him, but he know him, for he dealeth with he, with you and shall be in you. John fourteen fifteen through seventeen. He will guide you into all truth. John sixteen thirteen. Then then the Spirit Himself gives amazing spiritual gifts to God's children. See First Corinthians twelve four through eleven. In short, the God in whom we live and love, move, we live and move and ha have our being, Acts 17, 28, the God who gives to all life, breath, and all things, Acts 17, 25, has given us exist existence, the promise of salvation, material blessings, and the spiritual gifts in order to be a blessing to others. Again, whatever material possessions that we have, or whatever gifts or talents we have been blessed with, we are, we are in, indebted in every way to the giver in how we use those gifts. Yeah. Wednesday, responsibilities of God's family members. We all we are enjoy the spiritual and the temporal blessings and gifts that God gives us. How comforting to know too that we are part of the family. Uh, read Deuteronomy six five and Matthew twenty two thirty seven. What does this mean and how do we do it? How could you love God with? or your heart, with all your soul, and with all your, your mind. Matthew 22, 37. Interestingly enough, the Bible gives us the answer and is not what most people expect. Read Deuteronomy 10, 20, 12, and 13, and 1 John 5, 3. Biblically speaking, what is our proper proper response in our love relationship with our Father in heaven, keeping the law, obeying the commandments. For many Christians, uh, unfortunately, the idea of obeying the law, especially the fourth commandment, is legalism, and they claim that we are called simply to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. However, God is clear we reveal our love to God and to our neighbors by, yes, obeying His commandments. For this is the love of God that we keep His commandments. First John 5, 3. We are used to looking at this verse as where we love God and, and therefore we keep his commandments, that's fine. But perhaps we also can read it as this is the love of God. That is, we know the and experience the, the love of God by keeping his commandments. In Matthew seven twenty one through 27, Jesus said that those who hear and do God's words are likened to a wise builder who built his house upon the so solid rock. Those who hear but don't obey are link, likened to a foolish builder who built his house on the sand with a dis disastrous results. Both, both heard the word word, one obeyed, one didn't. The results made the difference between life and death. <clears throat> Think about the link between loving God and obeying His law. Why would love for God be expressed that way? What is it about keeping the commandments that indeed thus reveal that love? Hint. 
Think about what disobeying his law poses. Yeah. What think about what disobey his law cause? Yeah. Thursday treasure in heaven. Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth, on earth, where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal, but lay up for your yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor nor rust destroys, and where thieves do not break in and steal, for where your 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 treasure is, there your your heart will be also. Matthew six nineteen through twenty one. What crucial truth is Jesus speaking here? Who hasn't read the story after story of those who had amassed great wealth, only somehow to lose it? Our world is a very unstable place. Wars, place, yeah, unstable place. Wars, crime, violence. Natural disasters, anything can come in a moment and take away all that we have worked for, and perhaps even what we have honestly and faithfully owned. Then, too, in a moment, moment, death comes, and so these things become useless to us any, anyway. Of course, scripture never tells us it's wrong to be rich or to have a master wealth. Instead, in these verses, Jesus warns us to keep it all in the perspective. What, though, does it mean to lay up treasure in heaven? It means making God and his cause first and some uh, form, foremost in your life instead of making money first and foremost. Among other things, it means using what we have for the work of God, for the advancement, advancement of his kingdom, for working in behalf of others, and for being a blessing to others. For instance, when God called Abram, he planned to use Abram and his family to bless or the families of death, earth, the or the families of the earth. God said to Abram, who was called the friend of God, James two twenty three, I will make you a great nation. Nation, I will bless you and make your name great, and you shall be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. And I will curse him who curses you. And uh, in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Genesis 12, 2, 3. Yeah. In you. In you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. Yeah. I hope in you and in me. Like that bless come still for us. Genesis 12, 2, 3. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Galatians 3, 9. We have the same challenge presented to us as was presented to him. Money has great value because it can do great good. In the hands of God's children, it is good for the hungry drink for the thirst and the clothing for the naked. It is a defense for the oppressed and a means of help to the sick. But money is of no more value than sand on as it is put to use in proving, pro providing for the necessities of God life in blessing others and advancing the cause of Christ. Ellen White Christ's Objection Lessons, page 351. The four 
where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Matthew 6, 21. Where does your heart tell, tell you your treasure is? Where does your heart tell, tell you your treasure is? Yeah, last Friday, Jan January 6, the Father thought the heart of God yearns over his earthly children with a love stronger than death. In giving up his son, he has poured out to us our heaven in one gift, the Savior's life and death and uh, intercession, the ministry of angels, the pleading of the Spirit, the Father walking above and through all the, uh, the unceasing interest of heavenly beings all are enlisted, enlisted in behalf of man's redemption. Uh, Ellen G. White, uh, Steps to Christ, page 21. Yeah, if you have renounced the self and given yourself to Christ, you are a member of the family of God and everything in the Father's house is for you. All the treasures of God are opened to you, both the world that now is and that which is to come, the ministry of angels, the gift of his spirit, the labors of his servants, all are for, for you. The world with everything in it is your, yours so far as it can do you good. Uh, Ellen G. White, The Thoughts from the Mount, Mount of Blessing, page 110. There are the three discussion questions. One, with all of these awesome, awesome gifts that God gives his children, we are compared to ask, as did the psalmist, what shall I, I render to the Lord for all his benefits, benefits toward me, toward me. Psalm 116, 12. Make a list of the blessings and gifts of God to you in your spiritual and temporal life and be ready to share it with your, your class. What does this teach you about how thankful to God you really should be? Yeah, number two, though we think about God and uh, rightly so as our creator, scripture again and again teach, teaches that he is our sustainer as well. See Hebrews 1, 3, Job 38, 33 through 37, Psalm 135, 6 and 7, Colossians 1, 17, Acts 17, uh, 28, 2 Peter 3, 7, from the galaxies in the cosmos to the beating of our hearts to the forces that hold together the atomic structures that make up all no matter. matter. Uh, it is only God's sustaining power that keeps them in ex existence. How should this biblical truth to help us understand just what our obligations are to God. I'm so sleepy, you know, the, in terms of how we use whatever he has given us. How does this reality help us keep our life and the purpose of our life in proper perspective? Number three, the lesson talked about why of all God has given us. Jesus and the plan of salvation are the greatest gifts. Why is that true? What would we have if we didn't have that? And the great hope it offers us. And an atheist writer depicted humans as nothing but uh, hunkers hunks of spoiling flesh on this this disintegrating.
disintegrating violence. Why without the gift of the gospel would we have a point? Yeah, yesterday night I just woke up on every hour because of the cup there. The, I'm drinking water and uh, go to pee and so the coping so hard on my throat. Wow, I'm just in sleep. I want to go outside to read this big booklet because without the, without the, these classes, sometimes a little bit not, uh, not clear, but uh, with a class, I cannot read on in inside. Uh, some if the the sun is shining, I can see uh, more. Where well, read where? Well. Here is the inside story. Mission field in Lake Mala Malawi. Yeah, with grasses, more sleep. Mm -hmm, yeah, so that's why. By A.D.V. Moyo. A stranger stopped the Seventh-day Adventist University student as he walked down the road after a pathfinder meeting on the island of Chijmulu in Lake Mar Marai. His green pathfinder uniform caught her attention. Where are you coming from? The stranger asked with great interest. The student, Revision Koan Kwanga, told her that he had been participating in a pathfinder event at an Adventist church. His words seemed to touch her heart and the words started rolling off her lips. I used to be an Adventist, she said. I married an Adventist man, but we divorced. Uh, she spoke about going to bars and uh, living licentiously after the divorce. Then she moved to Chichumulo and married a local high school teacher. The next service, the woman showed up at the, at the Adventist church. She enjoyed the worship service and she asked the revision for Bible studies. The vision was delighted. This was why he had come to the island in the first place to share God's love. He belonged to a club of club of Adventist students at Muzuzu Muzuzu University, a major public university of 8,500 students located about 60 miles, 100 kilometers away. The club aimed to strengthen the faith of Adventist students and reach out to classmates through twice weekly prayer meetings. The club grew into the Muzuz Seventh day Adventist Church and its students fanned out to engage in missionary work in places in the region, including Chizumulu. Uh, Levision visited the woman and her husband in their home and after the Bible study left behind several books including Ellen Wise, the Great Controversy. When Levision arrived uh, for the second Bible study, he found the husband deeply engrossed in the Great Controversy was the difference between Saturday and Sunday. The husband asked the revision at the end of the Bible study. He promised to go with his wife to church the next service. Weeks and months passed, and the man and his wife were pictured here and gave their hearts to Jesus and were baptized 
Today, they are mission-minded members of the Chichun Mulo Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, Revision is convinced that God can use three young people to reach anyone and everyone. It is time to go and reach different classes of people with the good news of Jesus Christ, he said. The Mujuni Seventh-day Adventist Church, which started as a club of students, never dreamed that the Chijumulu effort would bear such fruit, glory to God. Yeah, here, the, yeah, there are a couple. Yeah, this is the part of the quarter 13 service offering will support Adventist education in the, in the East Central Africa Division. Thank you for your 13th service offering in the second quarter of 2021 that is helping to expand, expand Adventist education in Malawi. Malawi. Yeah, this comes from the General Conference Office of Adventist Mission, which uses Sabbath School mission offerings to spread the gospel worldwide. Read new stories daily at AdventistMission.org. Yeah, though I'm so sleepy and sleepy, but uh, I uh, re read it or so I gotta go lesson two, but I read it. Uh, this is the uh, second week of the January of 23. And I, I got uh, this lesson study on last uh, uh, service day. So I, I, I gotta read it all through maybe 12 so I can read it. Uh, so quickly, yeah. So I miss to read the lesson study. I I read the all the booklets of lesson study, but on last several several months, I didn't read. I I read all that on the first one, but the third one. I missed the still the behind left part of the uh, booklet, but uh, yeah, I wanna read this the booklet. Yeah, let's let's do pray the, the Lord's prayer, which the Lord gave for on the on the word uh, to the he. The, yeah, second coming of uh, Jesus Christ. So let's pray. Our oh, Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Yeah, I got to call the, the since the last of 2022, last month of 2022, and almost the three weeks is goes. Well, I got I got where so during two weeks, but on last uh, Saturday I visit my. Yeah, daughter's house. I just drank the water with the, you know. But I, I, I don't know. It just come, yeah, again. So my throat uh, had a little bit hurt, but on last night. But now almost it's okay. But still, I have coughing. <clears throat> I just drink with salt and then olive oil, olive, olive, just after gargling with the more salty water, 
goggling and brushing with salt and then after I just you know drink it, uh, uh, the smoke it's just a wonder of you know the olive oil and sometimes I use the oregano oil too uh, if the so so hurt on throat I feel the hurt on my throat I just gargling with the oregano oil that's yeah good one yeah I'm so glad to see uh, you again so I'm, I'm just you know uh, more <laughs> chat with you so thank you may God bless all of you I go to lesson two yeah bye